Good afternoon and happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the Wolverine Caucus Forum on a topic that we have never explored before with the Wolverine Caucus, and that is exploring Michigan's natural resources and the mining of them. And to introduce our speaker today, we have Senator Punya Hopgood from the 8th Senatorial District. Senator Hopgood serves on the Senate Appropriations Committee and among his responsibilities, uh, natural resources and environmental quality are a part of those areas that he oversees. And so we're very excited that Senator Hopgood will be introducing our speaker today. But I also want to thank the UM Alumni Association and the UM Office of Government Relations for their very kind and generous donation of this opportunity. And this edifice in which we are sitting is uh, thanks to the Michigan Municipal League. Andy Shore, I believe, is here with us today. And also we're joined by State Representative uh, David Rutledge, uh, State Representative Jeff Irwin, and uh, State Senator Hoon Young Hopgood, uh, who you will meet in a moment as well as uh, State Representative Matt Hookie. So we're glad that you're joining us today. We look forward to this opportunity to share this information with you, and it's being filmed by Michigan Government Television. So if in the future you would like copies of this, please let us know. Senator Hopgood. Good afternoon, Whoa, a little bit close. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. I think this is an outstanding topic. It's very timely as we think about the, the, the global world that we live in, the global economy, um, dealing with resources, I think is something that should be on so many people's minds. And um, it's, it's a pleasure to be able to introduce today's speaker, uh, Professor Casey Lohman, University of Michigan Department of Earth and Environmental Sciences, is widely known for his work as a sedimentary geologist and geochemist. He received his PhD from SUNY Stony Brook and following three years as a postdoctoral fellow at Brown University, he has been a researcher and educator at the university since January of 1980. His work has included examination of lead and zinc ore deposits and oil and gas fields in Michigan and throughout the world. In addition to his role as an educator and researcher, he serves as the director of the Stable Isotope and Keck Elementary, Elemental Geochemistry Laboratories at the University of Michigan. His current research also focuses on assessing geothermal changes that occur during times of global warming. Let's give a warm welcome to Professor Stacy Moman. Thank you very much, Senator Hoffman. Uh, I probably will not use a microphone. I may have to carry one around with me for the TV. Uh, I typically teach large classes, and I usually find that the conversational style, rather than hiding behind a podium, usually works best. So if uh, you have any problems hearing me, or if uh, our cameraman binds my voice wavering a bit, I'll try to correct for that. Uh, before we start, let me sort of point out, uh, my name is Casey, and that's a nickname. And people sort of say, oh, but it's Kiger C. Where did that name come from? Turns out the obstetrician that delivered all three sons, his last name was Kiger. My parents didn't have enough money. And so <laughs> instead of Fred Kiger, our Fred was his first name. They called me his last name. He stopped sending the bills. <laughs> also, it's a C without, it's just a C without a period. That's because I'm the third son. There was an A and a B, and my parents thought we were going to have like 10 or 12. We thought they were at least worth the alphabet. Uh, as part of the introduction, uh, I am trained in sedimentary geology in a broad sense, and primarily in carbonate sedimentology. So things like limestones and materials that, say, seashells are made out of. And in particular, I work on the chemistry of that, both in terms of elements and isotopes. And most of those isotopes are not the radioactive kind, but rather isotopes of oxygen or carbon. And those help us effectively understand such issues of temperature in the past, 
for example, reconstructing what seasons were like during times of global warming in the past. Uh, within that perspective, however, um, much of my research has dealt with understanding those same sorts of phenomena within the ground, uh, primarily related to oil and gas. Although, uh, as part of my experience as a young professor and as a developing professor at Michigan, uh, I've also explored with uh, some of my uh, colleagues who specialize in what we call economic geology or geology. And so, fortunately, we have some of the, the uh, state geologists back here who can help me out on some of the more uh, work that's being done. Uh, it's not clear to me when I put this together exactly the nature of the group that I've talked to. So I, in doing that, I'll try to provide an overview of some of the resources that we have available, uh, both in terms of their aerial distribution and also how they formed. Uh, and give us a sense of the diversity of the history of, of Michigan through geologic time over the last several billion years. And in particular, the imprint that that history has made in terms of uh, localized ore deposits in the Keweenaw, uh, a, a plethora of, of hydrocarbon deposits within the uh, subsurface of Michigan, as well as the surficial deposits that really comprise uh, a lot of the building materials. We probably have the biggest sandbox around in Michigan than most places that I know. There's a tremendous resource in sand and gravel. With regard to the role of, uh, of uh, Michigan's geology, and I'll typically call us geologists, recognized just as the earth has evolved and, and our societal needs change, so does geology change. It used, used to be geologists would go with their pick and go out and try to discover something new, much like a prospector. Uh, in the same sense, uh, we've gone beyond that. We've evolved uh, to a point where now much of what we do is rather than try to observe and discover, what we try to do is actually try to understand the process. I call it exploration. We try to understand the process geologically in terms of the chemistry and the physics that actually led to the formation and emplacement of a number of these deposits uh, that ultimately can be uh, uh, exploited uh, for society's needs. Uh, so we are, in effect, uh, evolving in our field uh, all the time. We don't just look at rocks. Uh, we, in fact, are earth scientists, and that includes uh, what we can think about as past environments, uh, as well as future environments. So much of what we deal with are real-time issues at the University of Michigan today. So uh, again, I'm going to emphasize that we are in many respects associated with what we can think about as understanding these processes uh, to develop predictive models. And that's really the, the challenge that we have. Uh, there is the other aspect of sort of geology or of earth sciences, and I would really call that exploitation. Uh, Michigan U of M uh, is really at least in, our, in the Department of Earth and Environmental Sciences, we are not as much exploit, exploitationists as really, really those that really are trying to understand the process. We do, however, again, by trying to understand process, get involved in some of the remediation. Uh, some of our faculty, for example, are working on mercury cycling in the atmosphere and on our waters, uh, work of Joel Bloom uh, and, uh, and others, uh, very clearly dealing with these questions of as we utilize the resources that nature has given us, we have the potential of modifying our environment in a negative fashion. And it's our important goal to try to keep that, that disruption of nature to a minimum. Uh, and that includes, as we'll end up, some of our water resources, which similarly are mined in a, in a very similar way. Traditionally, when we think about sort of mining, most people think in terms of the metallic ores. They think in terms of the copper of the Upper Peninsula or the iron ore, or if you're lucky, uh, platinum or gold or other minerals such as that. But in fact, we mine many of Earth's resources uh, from the surface. For example, as I mentioned, the construction materials uh, that are, are covering a surface veneer, essentially hiding much of the older ge geology beneath it. In fact, those are all very, very mineable. Uh, I sometimes joke with my friends that we should be we should be paying the Canadians a little bit of money every time we mine this, since most of that sand and gravel actually was mined off of their, their country and, and carried down here by glaciers. But in fact, uh, I think they're, they're moving a lot of other materials from uh, Toronto and other material here in, in the state as well. So I guess it's a payback. Uh, but we also, in addition to that, have a long history of salt uh, mining. 
initially uh, uh, Detroit mines. I think uh, there are still open mines. How are there still open uh, subsurface mines for salt in Michigan? Yes. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but I know that Windsor uh, maintains uh, active mining in that. Uh, but we're also going to see that it's not just the rock salt that's mined, but also valuable elements that are uh, derived from the dissolution, the solution of that salt in the subsurface. And I think we all know of the success and the centrality of Dow as one of the major industries in our state, which really takes advantage of this resource. resource. Now, in addition to that, Michigan has had a long history of hydrocarbon exploration and of production. It is a limited resource. Uh, and it is one that I know that we're all trying to, to essentially wean ourselves on, off of, uh, again, with this concept of renewable energy, in part because that resource is getting harder to find, it is getting more expensive uh, to produce, and its, its impact on the environment is clear. For those of us that, that work in these fields, uh, we need to, to move away from that, but it still represents a resource that we will continue to depend upon, uh, certainly within the next uh, several decades. Uh, we simply want to decrease our dependence on oil. But this will be one that uh, we'll see toward the end of this talk. Michigan continues to have untapped resources of this sort. And I want to stress that amongst ourselves in the department when we talk about resources, we never forget water because water, again, is going to be one of the primary resources on a global scale uh, in, the, in the 21st century. And so it's maintaining the quality of that water, not only for agriculture, but necessarily for drinking, that's going to be the real challenge. Uh, most of us think our water is pretty good in Michigan, right? The Great Lakes. And I think there are advisories out now that a, a pregnant woman or a young child aren't supposed to eat too many fish from the Great Lakes. Our water's good, it's not excellent. We still need to protect that resource. But it is something that we have a lot of and at some point we may need to share it regionally. From a satellite uh, view of Michigan, again I indicate that it's for the most part covered by a thin veneer up to several hundred feet locally and other areas, uh, thin veneers of outwash sand and gravel. Uh, but all of these represent essentially uh, the latest geologic sort of event, and that was about 10,000 years ago, the retreat of uh, glaciers during the, the last maximum glacial event on Earth. Uh, when we began to think in terms of the description of geology, it became difficult for those early folks who began to go through the discovery and observation stage, people like uh, uh, Houghton, uh, the first geologist appointed at the University of Michigan, I think it was 1834. Uh, with that, we began geology and began essentially at the university a tradition, a long tradition that has continued to change uh, its focus on research. But when he was doing his geology, he was limited to relatively few exposures of rock on the surface. Clearly, as you know, as you drive around this region, there are few places that you see rocks that are bedded. They simply are piles or, or, or fields of sand, of gravel, and of clay. And it was really only in places, for example, along the shorelines, like around Petoskey and Traverse City, uh, and certainly in the Upper Peninsula, uh, where we began to see the presence of rocks excellently exposed. For those of you that are in Lansing, one of the only places I can take my students is over there in, in uh, what is a Grand Ledge area where the Grand River has cut down through and removed a lot of ma that material. And those are relatively young rocks, but exciting rocks uh, for us to be able to show the students. So when we look at, the, at Michigan geology, in fact, some of the early finds, some of the early things that were documented were these amazing ore deposits, ones which included uh, vast resources of, of iron ore uh, and of copper. Uh, these were not discovered by uh, Houghton, but rather they were probably documented and then later began uh, the, the efforts to study them. In fact, the Native Americans uh, sampled or, or, or utilized this native copper uh, and so forth. Uh, so when we think then in terms of the, the location of true metallic ore, we're really talking essentially about the Keweenaw Peninsula and this region of Michigan. This geologically is significant.